Okay, so we're demoing uh, a bunch of different things here at Embedded World. Um, one of those things is a new uh, accelerated development environment for the new ARM Cortex A720 AE. Uh, it's a brand this, new processor? Yes, announced? this is the brand new processor that was announced by ARM uh, only in March this year. Um, traditionally, you'd have to wait quite a long time to get silicon for a new processor like this. And that basically means you have to wait for a very long time before you can start developing any software. And in the days of, of SDV and software-led design, you know, you, you have to start that early. And that's what Shift Left is all about. It's like simulating the CPU? So the way that, that, that it actually works is, is we optimize the cloud, uh, cloud configuration, cloud resources, uh, in order to run an A720AE model that we've created in a very fast way. So it's a super fast simulation. It's the same speed like having a real chip? It's like, it's, it's basically the same speed as real time, and in some cases can be faster. Um, and um, so here in the back, I see some uh, graphics. Uh, how is it related with, uh, with what's happening here? So the, the, the Pay360 environment is really all about trying to get you to software development, software design, hardware uh, validation, all of that stuff as early and as quickly as possible. And that's really down to the complexity of the SDV. You have to have this stuff done very quick and very early. Um, the demonstration that you just saw is part of the platform. And what we're trying to do there is to get uh, OEMs and tier ones to develop their software as early and as quickly as possible using something that's as close to the real hardware as possible way before silicon is available. What does it mean shift left SDV? So that's what shift left is really all about. It's about developing your software before the silicon is available. In other words, shifting your uh, all of your software development left in your project plan. So all the way left in your project plan. That gets you to developing your software at the same time as developing your hardware. And when you get to the end of that cycle, you've got both hardware and software available, ready for validation. And does, that's faster than doing it the traditional way. Does that mean you have to collaborate very closely with ARM? To be, uh, uh, you need to be aware of what's next, right? Well, that's exactly right. And when, when ARM uh, came to us and told us that they were launching the A720AE and that virtual platforms were incredibly important for that launch, and that um, Shift Left was a key part of their launch uh, material, it just became obvious that we should work together to try and build a, a, a very fast simulation environment to bring their software partners up on ARM, on the, on the new, the latest ARM, it's A720 AE, you know, as early and as quickly as possible. So this is a, like a high-performance embedded chip for the automotive market? The A720AE is a high-performance CPU for the market, yes, absolutely, for the automotive market. With, with uh, multiple cores and everything? Yeah, so obviously, just as many other ARM cores have multiple cores, multiple configurations. Cluster, some bigger cores, some smaller cores? All of that stuff is, is, is all part of the A720AE, but... Um, so here it says... Uh, 14? So the, the, it's a configurable core, it's a configurable CPU, so you can configure it to the number of CPUs that you would like in there. Just so happens on this demonstration, we've configured it to have 14 cores. And you run all that on the cloud? All of this environment is running in the cloud on a hyper-accelerated model that's running on our pre-silicon development environment. Can you say what's the actual hardware in the cloud? Uh, we, we, we don't really talk about what hardware we're using because um, part of what we're doing is, is essentially optimizing those hardware resources and the way that they're configured and then layering uh, software and other mechanisms on top of that to give a user a truly embedded environment but that's running on the cloud but that's running ARM very fast. I guess it doesn't matter what you what the hardware is in the cloud, right? As long as you can deliver what people need. Exactly. But it could be an ARM server system, or it could be an x86. It could be anything. I mean, you, you can optimize the cloud for many different reasons, right? You can optimize for performance. You can optimize for cost, right? In which case, you might want to run much slower simulations, but you don't want to pay as much. So, you know, either way, it's an optimization. And here you talk about uh, what you were talking about. Uh, here, there's... Uh, 
so here, yeah, so this is us working in collaboration with ARM and AWS. Um, AWS is obviously the cloud backend. ARM is obviously the A720 AE uh, new CPU. And we're putting to get that all together as, as a solution that allows customers to develop software on that embedded platform. Unprecedented Underneath, simulation speeds. Yes. Yeah, so we're, 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 if you wanted to do this in a traditional way, your models would be running very slowly. So the traditional way of doing this means that your software developer is going to be suffering from slow simulations, and that's not good for writing software. What are these logos I see here? Blackberry, uh, tier, tier four, Tata? Sure, so we, we released this environment to several um, several of ARM's software partners, and uh, some of them came up with demos in a matter of two and a half, three weeks to port their software onto this environment so that it was running on the latest A720 AE CPU, which basically means that you know, their customers and ARM's customers could conceivably leverage the software on the latest CPU in an environment that they could run their software in. So there's so much talk of uh, uh, autonomous driving, Yeah. EVs, yeah. is that what it is? Yeah, so this is this the A720 AE, predominantly for automotive, is targeted towards that high performance compute um, architecture inside of a car that's designed for multiple ECU functions like IBI and ADAS all combined into one and AV and level four autonomous. So it could stacks. be the architecture of next generation self driving car yes. CPUs. Yeah. And here, for example, you're talking about autonomous, is it related? Uh, yes, yeah, it, this is somewhat related. This is another expansion of um, the capabilities of the platform. And really what we're talking about here is how you get real-world stimulus into a virtual system. So the piece that we were talking about before was a virtual system where you can write your software and run it you know, in real time. What we're talking about here is the ability to inject real-world stimulus into that virtual system. So, so now... So this is a simulated situation? So yeah, so the, the this side over here is a simulated scenario that's generated by Carla. And then we have, um, in this diagram down here, so what you can see here with the car going is the car is essentially doing the same thing as what you're seeing on the, on the scenario. So when the car stops, the wheels will stop. When the car turns, just like it is now, the wheels will turn. And all this is happening because we're driving this car using an autonomous, uh, autonomous stack that's running inside of a virtual environment. And all of this is connected to our backplane, and the backplane is, uh, is the piece that drives the whole simulation. It synchronizes everything that's on it, including the external hardware. So what that means is that's why you saw when the car turned, the wheels turned on the real car. So that's, that backplane is synchronizing all of that. Nice. So you could be having customers all over the world. Everybody wants to do this, right? The uh, next gen is this. That's our expectation, is that if you want to do next generation software-defined vehicle, you're going to need all these kinds of mechanisms in place because there's no real way to handle the complexity of SDV without having real-world real stimulus coming in, without having super-fast simulation, uh, simulation models, because you're going to have to write huge amounts of software. You know, and integrate huge amounts of software to get this done. It might be also cores that are now super optimized for this market, and not just taking uh, like smartphone cores and up scaling them up like what they did before for the servers. And now, yeah. now they have optimal server chips, they have optimal laptop chips, and this could be maybe optimal for this market also. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the reason that we're in partnership with ARM is because we firmly believe that the next generation of vehicles are going to be on ARM. And ARM's ubiquitousness in the, auto in the automotive market is really important. And you know, for us to work together with them means that we both should you know, be able to leverage that and win at the end of the day, as well as the customers. And uh, it might become like an industry requirement. Even the government will say every car needs to be self-driving at some point. It's kind I, of a needs know, to... I can't speak for governments, but... But <laughs> if they do, it needs to have a certain spec. It needs to support a certain performance. Which yeah, maybe this is the 
this is the next gen. It's, it's entirely possible that you know the, the A720AE becomes a benchmark in terms of you know um, autonomous vehicles. Um, I don't know how that wraps into government, but you know at the same time it is a platform that we truly believe is going to be a winner in the next gen vehicle market.